interior is just as, if not more, important than the exterior of your car. Yes, we want a visual treasure making us look back before we close that garage door, but the interior is where you're going to be spending a portion of your life. The best interior is comfortable, functional, entertaining, and beautiful. Does the 2024 Mustang check those boxes? Let's do work. By the way, in this video, I will be giving shout outs to all those patriots who found the secret code word in last week's video. So type out the code word in this week's video for a shout out in my next video. You guys are awesome. The average person spends a whopping 293 hours per year driving. However, if you have a 40 minute commute to work and you work 260 days a year, that's 347 hours of just going to work alone. So your car interior is really your home away from home. Let's start off with the elephant in the room. The first thing you see when you get into your Mustang is an usher asking you for your ticket to the IMAS experience. It's big. No! You want to look away, but that screen demands your attention. It's loud. It's boisterous. It's awkward. Yet, at the same time, much like a painting of Kramer, I can't look away. I'm intrigued by it. What is it going to do next? What is it thinking? Is it judging me? Is it sentient? Does it know my pronouns? Does it want to kill me? Anyway, it's immersive to say the least. But then again, so is putting your face in a toilet bowl. But I'm happy to say a subscriber told me it looks a lot better in person, so I'm going to stay optimistic. But for the base model, not so much. Seriously, was someone operating this screen while eating Krispy Kreme donuts? Gross! Anyway, make sure you always have a microfiber cloth and Windex handy, please. Anyway, I digress. I feel the screen is very high tech, but the rest of the car just doesn't match. I feel they should have kept the dash more, not necessarily retro, but more Mustang. However, we do have to give credit to all the sick animations on the screen here. Look at this transition from sport mode to track. It's fire. No, not on fire. I mean fire. That's how Gen C says it's butter. No, it's not a condiment. What I'm saying is the screen is Gucci. No, I don't mean a purse that costs more than a full exhaust system, although that's a travesty in and of itself. But that's what millennials... Ugh, never mind. You guys are such nerds! Similar to the cool words I just used, Ford wanted to capture the younger generation of buyers, and making the screen more video game-like was one of the results. And I've got to say they've really nailed that vibe here. The screen does look beautiful. The resolution, the colors, the animation, all flawless. Great job, Ford screen designer. And whether you like it or not, there is a huge advantage over this screen, which we'll discuss in a few. But ultimately, I think the screen is a miss. It's like combining the Jetsons with the Flintstones, and it doesn't sit right. Now, here's an example of how to do modern in a muscle car. Look at the 2023 Camaro SS here. They nailed the modern in a balanced way, and it looks so much better. It just looks super premium, even though it's the same price as the Mustang. Actually, this Camaro may even be cheaper because we don't know the price of the 401A yet. They've got a perfect combination here of analog and digital on the instrument cluster and a nice unintrusive touch screen in the middle. Lots of analog buttons here, much better flow, a sleeker design, and even a nice heads-up display here to boot. Now, if we could just have this Camaro interior with the Mustang exterior, we'd have a polished gem on our hands instead of two diamonds in the rough. Speaking of controls, I will say one of the downsides to this big screen is that they've all but stripped most of the analog control knobs from the car. There is thankfully a volume knob at least. Now don't get me wrong, I have always loved technology, so I see this huge touchscreen as what I envisioned the future would be like as a child. But unfortunately, I'm not a child anymore. But they did nail the high tech here with their nice screen. The watch out is, until you get used to it, your eyes will be off the road a little bit longer, adjusting the temperature, the heated seats, etc. So just be careful. And lastly, as I alluded to earlier, there is one big improvement here. I love a driver-centric cockpit, and while we didn't get that to the degree of the C8 here, Ford did tilt the screen and controls more toward the driver now. A big improvement in my humble opinion and better than the Camaro. Hey, the passenger didn't pay for the car. They're not driving the car. Why should they get all the glory? Go jump in a lake, passenger. Just kidding. Not really though. Anyway, this adjustment opened up some space for an optional wireless charging pad and vertical phone holder, so you can watch rated R cars while driving. Just kidding, don't do that. Please pull over first, watch the full video, like, comment, subscribe, share, shop on my Amazon storefront, link below, and then proceed driving safely to your destination. Late, but hopefully more enlightened than before. Hereby noting both USB and USB-C ports right here. Next big thing you'll notice is the higher quality and sportier flat bottom steering wheel. It is a vast improvement over my 2018 Mustang, which barely had 10 and 2 notches and looked like a wet noodle compared to this big boy steering wheel here. As you can see, it's well appointed with leather and styling perforations. Ample 10 and 2 notches screen performance and are definitely meatier than the previous models, and the steering wheel is reportedly even thicker than the GT500s. I love the carbon-esque texture here and the dark silver-gray overtones, and the steering wheel is stitched 
stitched to near perfection. I will say I'm disappointed the stitching on the steering wheel doesn't match the stitching on the colored interior like it does for example on the Camaro here. It didn't match on my 2018 401A interior either and I think that's a big miss that cheapifies the car and I'm hoping due to Ford's touted hundreds of customization options that it will be an option although it isn't visible on any of the official images I've seen. They did show red stitching on the computer render here but it's missing from all the live models. Really Ford you can't give us some red thread for literally an extra penny? Boo I say to you Ford. Boo. Speaking of stitching those who enjoy their 401 interior will find themselves at home here because like the exterior Ford didn't stray too far from the formula and that's not necessarily a terrible thing especially since they did improve it slightly. For example there's no more Walmart fake stitching to be found like on my 2018 right here and that's a good thing. I had the showstopper red interior on my 2018 Mustang so I could use that to compare. I do have a 4k review of that on the channel if you want to check it out. Red stitching is prominent throughout just like my 18. We still have the perforated seats which are stylus and functional. Perforated seats are less slippery, more breathable, to reduce sweating. They even absorb road noise, make heating and cooling faster, and in general look higher end. And I like the red and black combination here. Also Ford kept the heating and cooling function which is great news and the Recaros are reportedly finally getting some heating and cooling love as well. Unchanged are the center console, armrests, cup holders, default ship knob which is probably customizable though. Actually the whole door looks exactly the same except they made the storage bin smaller now. Contours, colors, and most everything else looks the same including that hood release which I find to feel cheap and uncomfortable. I'd like to see some rubber on it as it's always uncomfortable to use. Around the shifter here they removed the aluminum for this faux carbon fiber which I find to be a little bit less appealing but maybe that's customizable when you make your order. Let's not forget Ford said there are hundreds of customization options. I can't possibly imagine that many options unless you can buy a ton of different digital cluster themes which I think will probably be an option as this car will have Wi-Fi updates. Yeah. Ford if you're listening it would be cool to sell some DLC that's downloadable content for the uninitiated where you could pay a couple bucks to have the screens designed with your favorite themes. For example maybe a favorite sports team or if you're a dork like me a cyberpunk or witcher 3 theme or maybe call of duty. The options are endless but at least I think Ford will have different options loaded in up front such as a Fox body cluster. It would also be cool to make use of these large screens to play some sort of video games while the car is parked. Like if your wife ran into the store to buy milk, which you know is going to darn well take over an hour. Extra points if you come up with a driving game where we use the real steering wheel to play. Hey, a man can dream. A small miss is not having the volume controls on the left hand of the steering wheel for those of us who get manuals. I still want to control the volume, muting, etc. when I'm shifting and with this layout it's less convenient. This time we get the red button, which I had in my G T350. Another nice little touch. This faux carbon fiber trim right here goes across the dash, behind the drive-in theater and out the other side. Trust me, it takes about 20 minutes to get behind that beast of a screen. It's around the vents on the face of the control panel and it's also just around the shifter here. I hope this is customizable for some other heretofore unseen options. I like real carbon fiber, not fake. At this point, I'm starved just to see something new. So I will say that these new vents here have grown on me and they add some much needed freshness to the interior. Another slight miss is moving the glove box lever further away and taking away the push button functionality which was more convenient for the driver to be able to access the glove box. As you can see here in this comparison it was easier to access in the 2018. My first impression of the drift brake was it just looks unrefined but I understand with this new functionality they wanted it to stand out and be more accessible. Plus how cool is a drift brake? Nice one Ford. Just don't use it near crowds my fellow Mustang brethren and sistren. That's how cool people say brothers and sisters or not. In the backseat seat of my 2018 401A, they had vinyl instead of leather. I hope it's real leather this time around because there is a noticeable difference. And you can be one of those guys who say that no one will be in the back seat. Well, in that case, why put anything back there at all? Just let it be raw metal. Would that be okay too? Didn't think so, cupcake. And I do love cupcakes. Anyway, my chubbiness aside, just what the hey is this thing? Is this black mask necessary here? Is that an eye? Is Ford watching us? I like the sleek new mirror here, but in general, I don't like taking up any of my vision. However, at this angle, it doesn't look like it will be that intrusive. I'll have to see it in person. I love the new colored seat belts and I think they'll have a good amount of different colors and designs to choose from. So far these red with black stripes are my favorite. Check out this little Mustang horse on the side we're treated to when we open the door. I love these little touches that remind you you're sitting in a car that's special. Nice polish Ford because ultimately this car is special. It's a Mustang. Yes it's not hugely different than the S550 but the S550 is a very sexy beast after all. Overall while I like the interior I feel the interior is just more of the same as my 2018 interior. For the extra price of this car 
car. And if you haven't seen my pricing video, it's linked in the top comments below. I feel the leather could have been upgraded, more supple. I'd like to see a thigh extension, more style, more streamlining like the Camaro, and just a higher level of trim in general. After all, this is now a $50,000 car. But instead, it's almost exactly the same as my 2018, which was $6,000 cheaper. So basically here, the only real upgrades over the previous model are in the steering wheel and more driver-centric focus, both of which I appreciate. So how are we going to grade the 401A? Well, for comparison, I give the Camaro an A-. Why the minus? Because although it's nicer than the Mustang, I would like to see more driver centricity, and I'm not feeling these bumps right here. They're weirding me out. Anyway, for the Mustang, the interior is still nice, and with the minor upgrades and color options, I'm giving it a solid B. Let me know if you agree in the comments below, and always remember the motto, always be kinder than necessary, and I will see you in the next one.